Perseverance discovers a variety of odd items on Mars, consumes its first rock from the Delta, and appears to have amassed what appears to be cat hair. Through Hawksbill Gap, the rover has advanced significantly, traveling nearly 400 meters, or a quarter mile, in a week. Thanks to its autonomous algorithms, the rover independently chose and examined two rock targets for the first time. The NASA team intends to use this software more regularly going forward to make sure the rover doesn't miss anything interesting along its journey. Perseverance has been traveling with an unexpected companion for more than four months now, a rock that became lodged in its front left wheel. The rock has not damaged anything while spreading out over more than 5.3 miles, 8.5 kilometers, yet it seems like it doesn't want to go. Although rocks have hitched rides with other rovers before, Perseverance's companion appears to be breaking Mars hitchhiking records. The rover is facing the Delta Summit on Sol 451. Scientists are particularly interested in the rocks in this region. The drill of Perseverance is itching to be used. On Sol 452, the rover chips away at a rock surface with its rock abrasion tool. The rover then utilizes its gaseous dust removal tool to clean the cuts and dust. This device is just a compressed nitrogen can and emits four brief puffs. The crew instructs the rover to take a picture of the tiny hole after inspecting the tool for any damage. The rock abrasion instrument is crucial for assisting geologists in getting a comprehensive picture of what is concealed beneath the surface since the Martian climate can alter the top layer of rocks over time. Thanks to the dust removal tool, you can see the wall of dust that is encircling the target. Although the rock's fine grain structure and pinkish color indicate the presence of hematite, it is unsuitable for drilling because it sank slightly upon abrasion. This is problematic because one of the best opportunities for discovering intact microbial life at the Delta is in fine grain material. In the meantime, researchers on Earth analyses mission data going all the way back to Sol 148 to produce this spectacular animation. The rover experienced one of its windiest days on this occasion. It gathered a large number of dust devils. The rover reportedly comes into direct touch with four dust devils on average each day, mostly during Martian noon. This is fantastic news for our little helicopter friends since it suggests that the winds may be able to clear accumulated dust from its solar panels, averting potential low-power panic in the future. The helicopter makes its 29th flight in celebration. Perseverance is currently aiming to overtake ingenuity. This map displays the Delta as well as other significant places. To get to the top of the Delta, both machines are supposed to travel up a smooth channel. Currently, Perseverance is in a very positive position. The rover is getting up up and personal with the Delta front while taking some stunning pictures. By far, this is the most intriguing location Perseverance has looked into. These rocks have an extremely alien appearance, they nearly seem like they belong on another planet. Despite years of monitoring the Mars rovers, we have never before encountered rocks like these. View the cracks in this rock. Is it the result of gradual erosion by the Martian wind? Or did water play a part in the procedure? Until we return these samples to Earth, we won't be able to say for sure. The rover records an amazing image on Sol 466. It's a rock that resembles the head of a snake. The most intriguing part of the photograph isn't whether or not a lost civilization of Martian snakes made it, despite internet rumors to the contrary. Check out that rock. It seems to be perched atop a bigger rock. If so, it's improbable that the Martian wind carried it there. Could the procedure have included water? Or is it something quite different? An expertly placed meteorite, for instance. Or maybe the Martian snake people planted it there. It is very difficult to determine whether this rock is balanced or if it is only an extrusion of the rock that is poking up behind the main boulder. As anticipation for collecting samples from the Delta increases, the NASA crew focuses on the light substance that Perseverance first noticed on Sol 411. 
In this image taken from Soul 464, a bit of foil that seems reflective can be seen. This is most certainly a piece of landing debris, but there's a problem. The crew has determined that it is a piece of multi-layer insulation, maybe from the sky crane that took off after Perseverance touched down and flew away from the landing site. The sky crane, on the other hand, came down 1.2 miles away, or 2 kilometers, to the southeast. It's probable that the crash launched some debris into the air, some of which fell to the ground here. The smoke plume produced by the impact is seen in this view from Sol Zero. Theoretically, such pressures may have thrown the substance into the air at a great height where it was picked up by the wind. NASA, however, is of the opinion that the debris simply got trapped in the Martian wind after settling close to the crash site. Despite being taken from somewhat different perspectives, these two photographs demonstrate how the piece of debris is drifting due to the wind. In order to prepare for its drill, the rover abrades yet another rock on Sol 472. This time, it works with fine-grained material. Unfortunately, the rock was not appropriate for a drill effort because it broke and was driven into the surface. Perseverance is instructed to take a meticulous panorama while the team choose which rocks to climb next. The Curiosity rover's previous record of 1.8 billion pixels has been surpassed by this panorama, which has 2.5 billion pixels and is now the most detailed image ever captured on the surface of Mars. The crew hopes to obtain core samples from the Delta front, which is highlighted in the image. The team notices something on Sol 474 in one of the photographs. They give Perseverance the go-ahead to investigate further. Additionally, the object is shifting position, most likely as a result of the wind. The object, which resembles a string, might be yet another piece of spaceship wreckage. Based on the observed 2 by 2 millimeter mesh pattern, it has been concluded that the object is in fact spacecraft debris and is a piece of Dacron netting. It appears that wind-borne detritus naturally finds rest here. The NASA team is concerned that all of this debris could compromise the sample's integrity or jeopardize the rover in some other way, but these debris discoveries have them considering the effects of potential future landings in order to better control the debris field. The rover encounters a boulder known as Betty's Rock on Sol 477. The strata of this rock would make a fantastic core sample, detailing the region's prehistoric past. Unfortunately, the rover's arm cannot be maneuvered safely close to the rock due to the uneven layers and unusual shape. Perseverance captures a lot of close-up shots, but it will need to keep trying until it obtains its first core sample from the Delta. A few souls later, the team finds a location that will work well for the rover's drill. Perseverance is able to collect its first core sample from the Delta thanks to a rock known as Skinner's Ridge, which will be of immeasurable importance when the sample return mission returns it to Earth. The core is the longest one yet for the expedition, measuring 6.7 centimeters, or 2.6 inches, in length. The rock wasn't as finely grained as the earlier Delta rocks that were abraded and later determined to be unsuitable for drilling, but it was softer than other previously cored rocks, needing just minimal levels of percussion. Following a fruitful coring campaign, a routine inspection of the rover's drill reveals an oddity. Images show two tiny pieces of debris, a hairline item on the drill chuck and a coring bit in the bit carousel. The NASA crew investigates the problem by taking numerous pictures from various perspectives. They feel confident to move forward with the task after moving the drill and verifying that everything is still functional. Given that we have seen so much of it in this region, it is most likely that the hair-like thing is a little piece of crash landing debris. Fortunately, it does not now represent a threat. The rover is preparing to take another core sample on Sol 518 while it rests at a place called Wildcat Ridge. From here, you can also see Skinner Ridge, the location of the rover's first sample from the Delta. Now, the NASA team wants the rover to travel to an area known as Enchanted Lake. We would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to all of our supporters for supporting the creation of videos like this one. If you like this video, Please think about becoming a member, it really helps.